I want to talk about the concept of expected return. Now, suppose we have 20 days or of stock returns. We could figure out what the average return was by adding up those 20 stock returns and then dividing by 20. Now that would be what we call an arithmetic average. But sometimes we, we want to find an average but we don't have a bunch of data. What we're doing is we're looking into the future. For example, I have a little table here where there are three states of the world. Recession, normal growth, and a boom period. And our economic forecasters have figured out that there's a 25% chance of a recession next year, a 50% chance of normal growth, and a 25% chance of a boom period. And if we have a recession, our stock is going to go up 5%. If it's a normal period, it'll go up 8%. And if it's a boom period, it'll go up 12%. So what return do we expect to get next year? Well, what we can do is we can take a weighted average, and we call that expected return. And you've done weighted average before. If, um, you know, in fact, use these same numbers. Suppose there were 20, you know, the midterm was weighted 25%, the final was weighted 50%, and your term paper was weighted 25%. How would you find your average for the class? You take 25% of your midterm grade, 50% of your final exam grade, and then add it to 25% of your term paper grade. And we're going to do the same thing here. You can't just add these numbers up and divide by 3 because in this case you'd be giving too much weight to the recession and the boom period and not enough weight to the normal growth. So expected return here is just going to be calculated as this weighted average and let's use a summation sign it's going to be i equals 1 to n where n are the number of states of the world in this case we have three but in general it's going to look like this probability that you're in state of the world i times the return in state i. And if you wanted to expand that, if you don't like looking at the summation sign, it's p1 times r1 plus p2 times r2, okay, where the p's are the probabilities plus dot dot dot, all the way out to the final period or the final state of the world, pn rn, probability we're in state of the world n times the return in that state of the world. So from our example, we would get the following. 0.25 times 5% plus 0 0.50 times 8% plus 0 0.25 times 12%. And we can just work that out. Point two five times five. That's one point two five plus point five times eight is going to be four, and then point two five times times twelve is going to be equal to three. And then we can just add those together. Let's see, 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 1.25 is 8.25%. And if you look at it, ask yourself whether the answer makes sense. The answer can't be lower than 5% because that's the worst case scenario, nor can it be greater than 12%, which is the best case scenario. So it has to be between 5 and 12 and let's see and again let's look 8 is is 3 bigger than 5 12 is 4 bigger than 8 so it should be a little bit bigger than 8% it's not quite symmetric around 
the 8%, so it should be a little bit bigger than 8%, so that looks good. That's a, that's a reasonable number we get there. Now, when we calculate expected return, we're calculating an average. But we oftentimes like to calculate the variance or the standard deviation to find out how spread out we are around this average value. And the formula follows the same sort of concept that we just used. You should recall from stats class that variance is, the, is an average of the square deviations from that average or mean value. This average value will be our expected value. So let me just write that down here. The variance is going to be equal to, and again I'll write the general formula, i equals 1 to n, probability or in state of the world i, of ri minus the expected return of r squared. And again, we can expand that out so we get P1 times R1 minus the expected return of R squared plus P2 times R2 minus the expected return squared on and on for as many possible cases as we have. So let's just finish up the example we have here. In this case, we're going to have first state of the world. There's a 25% chance. In that state, we get a 5% return, minus 8.25 squared. Plus, there's a 50% chance that we're in the second state of the world. 8 minus, again, the, the expected value, 8.25 squared plus 0.25 and what do we have 12 minus 8.25 squared I sort of ran out of room there sorry about that and so what do we have here let's see let's work these out 5 minus 8.25 squared times 0.25 equals 2.640625 plus 8 minus 8.25 squared times 0.5 and this equals negative whoops we shouldn't get a negative number I did something wrong here hang on let's see 8 minus 8.25 equals squared times 0.5 you should never get negative terms here because the probabilities will always be positive and you're squaring these terms so even though there's a negative inside the parentheses after you square it you'll get a positive number alright so that's not going to be a negative number let me just try and uh, erase over that Oops. Let me get back my pen, get it the right size. 0.03125. And then what's the last number? The last one is 12 minus 8.25. And then we want to square that. Whoops, I'm sorry. I should have squared that. And then times 0.25. No, no, I'm not happy with that. Let me just do that again. 12 minus 8.25. Okay, when the numbers don't look right, punch them in again. Make sure you got it right. 
Okay. Um, square it and times 0.25. All right, there's no harm in punching in a number a second time. So I get here 3.515625. All right, so let's add those numbers together plus 0.3125 plus 2.64. O six two five, and we get six point four six eight seven five. Now you've probably recall from stats class, you can also compute the standard deviation, and the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. And a lot of times we like the standard deviation because it's in the same units as the expected return. Notice here we've squared all these terms, so the variance is in different units than the standard deviation, or I'm sorry, than the expected return. So let's take the square root of that, square root of 6.46875. And we get, let's just hit the square root key, we get 2.54 something or other, 2.54. And this is our measure of how spread out we are around the average value. Let me say just another word or two. Sometimes you'll do a computation and you'll get zero variance, or you may do that. The only time you get zero variance is when all of these numbers are the same. Zero variance means you know with certainty what the value will be because it doesn't fluctuate. There's no variance. So if you get zero variance and the numbers are different, what you probably did, in fact what you almost certainly did, was you forgot to square the terms here. Notice that 5 minus 8.25 is a negative number. Over here, 12 minus 8.25 is a positive number. If you don't square them, the negative number may cancel out the positive number depending on, depending on uh, the problem, depending on the actual ob numbers in the uh, example. And you could wind up getting zero even when there is fluctuation. So if you get that, Go back and redo your calculation. You saw that when I was doing it, I made a couple of mistakes or a couple of times and the numbers didn't look right. Punch the numbers in again. Okay. The worst that happens is you're reassured that you did it correctly. But don't just accept numbers from the calculator even when they look ridiculous. Okay. We do that all the time. Sometimes we forget to, to go back and check and make sure that we did it correctly.